Hey everybody, okay, so we are going to be painting up a Crix Warjack today. This is the first of probably two videos. These Warjacks are, uh, have a great simple color scheme that you can enhance with doing a lot more advanced techniques. For myself, I'm going to be painting a very simple but effective color scheme that really shows off the models. You can see there's a little chip there in the corner I do have to take care of before we come back in the second video. But after I prime the model in black, these are the colors that I used, Lead Belcher, I just it slapped the whole thing with lead belcher. So <laughs> when we get to the next clip, you're going to see it's already done. Castellan green, retributor armor, and the new giant honking pot of known oil that I purchased. Okay, so this is what you're going to have at the end of this video. So like I said, after I primed the model, I just slapped it with lead belcher you want to sh shade or not shade but maybe water down your your lead belcher just a little bit maybe a drop of water for every uh, full brush that you're using you don't want it to be too thin because when it's too thin it spreads and it just looks like a um, metallic black you want to cover your model so it has this nice dark iron look to it so after the black primer is on like I said I hit the whole thing with lead belcher you want to get the armor plates you want to get the uh, all of the little bits underneath. The uh, For Warjacks, a lot of similarities, no matter which army you're painting, are that there's a lot of the steel and iron gears that are in the joints of the arms, uh, in the back of the legs, and the torso. Usually the uh, any exposed areas are going to have that kind of silver look to it. You're going to notice also in this video at some points I do have uh, some issues with my, my light on my table. It's uh, one of the things that I'm going to look to replace when uh, I start, when, when I'm able to, when I have enough funds. So, all right, Castellan Green is the first color that we're going to be using. And uh, this is a nice, thick paint, great coverage. Uh, you, you do want to thin it down just a little bit. I am using, as always, my wet palette to put my uh, paint on so that I can make sure it's workable and not only now but for a couple hours later if I wanted to go back and or go out and do something and come back the, that paint will still be able to work with because it's just going to be sitting on that wet palette on the parchment paper. For those of you who are new to my channel a wet palette is simply a plastic clamshell like you would get for purchasing any single figure and put line the bottom with some water just a, a thin layer of water and then put a sheet of parchment paper on top of that water so you have a little bit of water seeping through the parchment paper what it's going to do is allow you to either mix colors or just take some paint out of the pot put it on that wet palette put a small small baby drop of water on top of it so that it'll spread out and absorb from the top side of the parchment paper and then it's you're just going to be amazed by how much you're able to use that paint for you know the next couple of hours like I said I've, I've gone and uh, painted had a long painting session and then said okay I'm tired I'm gonna go to sleep and the next morning I come back and the paint is still usable so it's a great thing to work with and uh, pretty much no cost I mean once you buy a roll of parchment paper that thing is gonna last you you know I'm still on my first roll of parchment paper that I bought a year ago so it, you just use a little bit every single time and sheets of parchment paper are, you know, how many feet long. Some of you might hear the uh, lovebirds we have at the Lady Boss's house cheeping in the background. And um, yeah, it's, I apologize for that. It's going to be a little bit of ambient noise. Sound like I'm recording in a rainforest here. But uh, yeah. So when I'm working on large flat plates, my brush stroke is very usually top to bottom and once I put a line of paint down I will spread it out towards the sides I know some people who put like three or four lines of paint and then mix the mix the paint together and try to even them out but what I do is I, I put the paint down in an initial stroke right off of the wet palette and then I will feather it out from the sides and over the years everybody gets their own what I call their own technique and uh, this is what I found to be most useful. Hey, speaking of painting technique, if you don't know, I'm writing a book on painting, an ebook on my style of painting, my method of painting, and I'm putting a lot of time and effort into that. I'm going to be releasing it 
on uh, publishing it, hopefully on on e-readers and Kindle and uh, the Apple iBooks. But uh, you can get each chapter of my book as I'm working on it. It's still, you know, work in progress. But if you want to see what I'm doing, then head over to my Patreon page. For now, it's free. I'm putting all of the all of the content in my private Patreon feed. I'm putting it all up for free from now until the end of January, just so. Uh, hopefully, those of you who come by and read the articles, listen to the MP3s, you will be able to uh, hear what I'm doing, and hopefully, it'll inspire you to support my studio. There's, uh, I guess, the the lowest point of of support and patronage is a dollar a month, which I think is just fantastic. Twelve dollars a year—that's three weekly white dwarfs, you know. And <laughs> how many weeks have I gone by without uh, picking up the weekly white dwarf just because it's it's I don't know it's every single week is uh, I, the value versus the investment for me how many how many times has there been I think if, if you if you really think about it something of value in the weekly white dwarf most of the things that I find of value as a hobbyist are the um, painting articles or uh, the showcases of other artists work I'll, I'll spend the money to have that as a reference point so I can just flip it open and look at it but you know a lot of people have given up on the weekly white dwarf and so I, I guess it just depends on where you want the value. Okay, when you're painting a model, any kind of warjack, that's especially one that has a lot of exposed, um, I guess, interiors like this does, the, the Crick's army is a lot of black and silver with green. And so more so than the Kador or the uh, Signar guys, you're going to have a lot of uh, silver in your warjacks. So you have to find the areas that you want to paint your spot color, in this case green, and, um, and, and then I kind of look for the balance of, of green to silver. The uh, highlight or the pop color is going to be gold, so um, you want to have just a balance of green and silver, and then the gold is going to be the accent. That's what I'm looking for, not the pop color, but the accent color. When you're also painting your miniature, you want to hold it from the bottom and look up at it because a lot of times we miss the under areas, like the bottom of the armor plates, the, um, the shadowed areas, and uh, not everybody's going to pick up our models and take a look at them from every angle, but really for us as a painter, I think it's, it's good to have. Okay, that's Retributor Armor. That's Games Workshop's new gold base color. So... I love Balthazar Gold. I think Balthazar Gold is the best product they've released in a long, long time. But Balthazar Gold is going to give you a more reddish and bronze kind of gold finish. If you want a yellow, you know, every kiss begins with K, jewelry store kind of finish to your gold, it, this is going to give you a great yellow gold. It's kind of the equivalent of the old, uh, in the old Shining Gold, I think it was called. <clears throat> so I think it's it's... It's a good color to use, and uh, it it's pops naturally against the green. So for this, my brush strokes are a little bit shorter because you'll see that um, the, the surface area that I'm working with is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to be making some mistakes. I'm going to be getting some of that green paint onto the gold gold areas, or I'm going to be that's opposite. I'm going to be getting that gold paint onto some of the green areas, and really this is up to you. If you want more, I guess, gilding or more, I guess, decorations, you could also say, then you're going to add a little bit more gold. If you want your guy to really look grimy and dirty, once we put that known oil on, it's going to really darken this model. And if, if that's the, the goal you want, then definitely add less gold. Whatever finish you want as a painter is uh, going to really come out in, your, in the amount of accent color you use. I always go with more because to me, the more accent color is it's like the third color uh, on a model. So you've got two predominant colors, in this case, green and silver. The more of the accent color you see, I think it really shows off that you took that time and effort into into painting that. So I could have just done his head and I could just do his shoulder pads and that would be, you know, that would be fine. But uh, I'm also going to be getting the little joints in his shoulder. And I'm 
also going to be getting the plates on his hands. And there's some gilded edging that are that you're going to see on his, I guess, his back exhaust pipes. And so all of that is going to be getting some gold. And th the tricky thing with balancing is you never want there to be more of the spot color than your two dominant colors. And I'm really using also the old, I guess, examples of the Crix war jacks to kind of inform how much of each color I'm painting. So he's got this spine here that I'm painting in gold. I, I took that as uh, in, or from inspiration from the from the artwork. And this is a metal model. This is a really chunky, beefy war machine model. This is not the newer plastic resin hybrids. So I love feeling a big, heavy miniature in my hand because it really adds the weight to the model, uh, to the paint that you're putting on. I feel like it's less, you feel less like you're painting a toy and more like you're painting onto a uh, sculpted piece of artwork. Isn't that funny? Because you think about it, there's m more, um, I guess, detail you can pack onto models nowadays with the plastic and the uh, 3D imaging and however they, they do their models. Now, when you <laughs> think of the old the old models for for War, Warhammer, Warhammer 40K, and you know all the ranges that have been around, like the old Ralph Partha hand sculpted ones, where the the females look, you know, pretty pretty beefy, and and the uh, even the men looked kind of like orcs, and every everything kind of looked like your you you just took some clay from high school art class and slapped something together. The the amount of detail you can put on your models now is just amazing. And my, my apologies for the uh, focusing issue. This is around the time when I'm trying out some new angles for the uh, camera to see where I can get the best kind of finish. And <laughs> sometimes I was so focused on painting, I didn't realize I'm not even in the frame. But you can see the hand plates that I painted in gold and the shoulder joints, the, those big shoulder balls. I'm going to get, I'll get it down eventually. And uh, I guess I'll figure out sooner or later how to, how to best focus my models. I'm yeah, I'm sorry for those of you who are feeling your eyes getting all cross-eyed now. He's also got toes. He went to the uh, the manicure pedicure place with my lady boss and he's getting his tail toenails done. So again, we're looking for areas to put that pop color, that accent color. There is grills on the inside of each of those hands too. Anywhere where you see uh, grills on a model is usually where you put that, that accent color. So on the inside of his hands there, we're gonna be painting some gold. And I think we still have to get to the edging of the pipes and on his back there. And oh yeah, his tusks are gold as well. So you can see I, I tried to change the light. I, I put a light in front of me to make it a little bit brighter. I, I thought this would not work so well for, um, I guess, keeping a consistent, the integrity of the, the colors, but I think really it, it helps to see where all the, all the different shadows are painted. Later on when I'm near the end of the video, I'm actually going to be going back to working without this light in the front end. I think it looks pretty, pretty different. I, like, I think it looks good here. I don't think I've noticed yet that I did not paint the green plate onto the right hand. So I'm going to be doing that in, in a bit. Yeah, I've never painted a War, war Machine Crix model before. This is the first time. So I, I always find it interesting when like the aesthetics of some armies for some games are so different, right? You can paint orcs or you can paint a skeleton or you can paint a high elf or you can paint a dwarf. Like everything looks different. So they're gonna paint different. With War Machine and Hordes, the War Jacks, I guess War Machine more Hordes is, is different. But the War Jacks all kind of share similar, similar uh, anatomy. You've got the big hulking upper body armor plates on the shoulders um, and you've got exposed inner gears and cogs and all stuff all that kind of stuff in the in the center 
in the back. It's also really exposed in the back of the legs. And despite there being some differences in the aesthetics, like the, the face models and the different ways that the armor is, is put on the hands and, and stuff, I think overall, once you paint the warjack, you kind of know how to paint other warjacks as well. You're just gonna be trading out the colors and identifying, okay, where, where would I normally paint this color on a different model? So instead of painting red for Kador or uh, blue for Signar, I'm just painting green. And I'm just looking for the identifying armor plates on each one. Like the back of the hand, the, uh, the head plate, I guess, the shoulder plates, shoulder pad plates. I don't know if I mentioned this, but yesterday was Duke's birthday. So we took him to Pet PetSmart down the street from, from where we live. And uh, I guess there are, th you, you can let your dog walk around inside the store. They have puppy training classes and, and stuff. So uh, unfortunately, a lot of people who bring their dogs in, if they're not house trained, they'll, they'll pee on stuff. And so Duke was just having a blast. Like we had to be extra careful where we were walking and make sure there was no... You know, no dogs had accidents on anything that we were looking at, and it's it's kind of it's kind of gross when when you think about it. But they have cleaning supplies all throughout the the store, and and they really try to focus on puppy training, obedience classes, and stuff. And it was cute. Duke got to uh, run around and meet a bunch of other dogs. Some of them were friendly because he's such a friendly dog. He's curious and he's friendly. He's not at all uh, antisocial or, or or violent or angry. But some other dogs, especially the bigger dogs, they, they weren't having it. <laughs> and he'd just be like, well, what's wrong? Why don't you want to make friends with me? But I think he had a good birthday. We, we, we pooped him out. He's all tuckered out and tired today. We had a great time going around town. Okay, so you'll notice that I painted the back pipe with a little bit of gold on the edging. I'm now getting on his faceplate. There's a couple of accent places, like uh, right down the, the ridge of his, his face there. All right, in this last section of the video, we are taking some oil, known oil specifically, and it's the wash, the black wash, and we're just going to slather our model with it. It's at this point that my the light that I was using in the front got a little bit too hot. I took it away, and this is the part where I mentioned it's, it's going to get a little dark. You're not going to be able to see all of the inner workings under the chest, but there's not really any technique I have to share about this except use a big brush, a wash brush if possible, and... I'm sorry, my hand's getting in the way because I'm trying a new camera angle here. Cover the entire model, spread that wash out so you don't have any pools. You don't want your model to dry with pools of wash gathered anywhere, especially in those large flat armor plates. If you get some puddles and pools forming like in the ribs or in the back or on the back of the leg and all of the uh, steam steampunk looking areas, then you know that's okay because we can we can kind of work with that and work around it. But if you have puddles of dried wash on the shoulder pads for example it's really bad news it's it's hard to work around so basically all i can say for any kind of wash where you're doing in general overall wash like this you've got two types of techniques when you're washing your models the first type is like this cover the entire model in a consistent wash or large portions or sections of the model so this would be you could do this for your space marines for your um like for example, my Bad Moon Orcs, I washed the entire thing with Seraphim Sepia because that was a good wash to unify all of the colors, which were pretty similar, the yellow, the brown, the green, and uh, it was a consistent wash. For this one, we're doing Nuln Oil, and that's a consistent wash to show kind of oily and grimy and dirty and um, just kind of spooky looking dark, dark shadows. And uh, when you're doing that, then you just want to make sure, you, like I said, that the wash does not pool anywhere. Or you could do selective washing, and that's selective shading, which means that you take your wash, and instead of putting it all over the entire shoulder pad, like that, or all over the uh, in internal workings, you just shade the underside or the interior, and uh, that leaves the colors looking like you just painted them, the base coat colors looking kind of vibrant and bright, 
and or at least brighter they're not so bright in the case of castellan green and uh and then you just work with selectively shading your models so this is the way that i'm i'm choosing to do it make the whole model dark tie in all the colors together the green to the gold to the silver and once it dries we're gonna i'm gonna go away now and, and show you what it looks like at the end then uh, we can work from there to bring those colors back up. So here it is, all the wash is dried uh, and we are ready to highlight our model. Hey, thanks for, so much for watching guys. Don't forget to leave a comment, hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video.